this is 101. It's very, very basic. I won't introduce you what free software is because it's uh, the four freedoms. I, I give it for granted. I, will, I want just to give you some basic information that may, may you already know, but it's always worth repeating and having ready because uh, licensing is not difficult once you have the basic bricks all in the, the right place. Otherwise, everything falls and you make a, a big mess. So, uh, I had a, an introductory course on licensing in this very room. It took two hours. Now I have to condense it into 15 minutes, which is uh, a daunting uh, experience. And bear with me, I will be slightly fast-paced, but uh, the, the, uh, I made a slide yesterday night. I didn't plan to have slides, but these are, I think these are going to be quite uh, self-explanatory. So, bear with me. So, uh, why do we have to care about licensing, about code, about, uh, uh, about copyright? Well, uh, anytime you have software, you touch software, and uh, this software never comes without a license, never comes without some conditions. But unfortunately, if you don't have free software condition, what happens for copyright applies. So copyright applies by default. So you have to ac actively go and seek the license that applies to that bit of software. This alone is sometimes a not so easy uh, task for you. And go figure, if you don't have just one small piece of software to take care, but the big free software project uh, that takes in thousands of uh, of uh, external packages, libraries and stuff. So, you have to think that if you don't find out the right license, uh, hopefully a free software license, you are just stuck with statutory provision. It means that you cannot use the software, you cannot run the software, you cannot copy the software, you cannot distribute the software, you cannot modify the software, and by all means you cannot modify your, uh, you distribute your modified version of the software. So you can do basically nothing. So, you have to find out. Uh, one very important uh, concept to, to take in is that whenever you uh, uh, start a project, you don't write in the vacuum. You always, yesterday it was clearly uh, stated, you have always have to uh, build on something else, uh, somebody else has produced, and this somebody else is a copyright holder. So it has rights on this. So uh, the code comes with conditions attached. It's like a tag that you have to find out. Uh, anytime you take in a project, uh, take in some libraries, take in code. This code is called inbound. So across my presentation, inbound means the software you take in for modifying, for integrating in your project and the licensing conditions that are attached to it. So inbound licensing means the license that are already applied to that software and which I must take for granted. Conversely, when you distribute the software, put your software, your contribution to the outward uh, world, you are putting software outbound. So the outbound license is the license of your own software and your own software as well. So uh, this is a single most important idea that I want to convey. And inside your software contains something which is more than trivial and comes from the outside, this is a derivative. What a derivative means? It means that uh, you can, of course, you own the copyright of the entire project, but you must have permission from the inbound uh, copyright holders, of the, uh, the holders of the copyright of the inbound software. Uh, it's not that it's not yours, but if you don't have the condition, you don't comply with the conditions or uh, uh, under which the permission is given, then you cannot distribute this. Software. So, uh, the, the conditions is another key word I want to convey. Uh, so, often they, uh, people speak about obligations. 
actually free software by and large come with conditions condition is a special tool in, in, in law which means more or less what an if then statement means in uh, in software uh, writing so if the condition is complied with so the if statement is true then you, you receive the permission under that license to modify distribute uh, original or modified software so uh, this is the only condition under which you are permitted and permission can be a uh, condition can be of all uh, of all uh, nature but in OSI we have been discussing this in this discussion uh, the license and discussion list and we think that for qualifying as free software or an open source software uh, this li these conditions must must be belong to the use of software not to external conditions like uh, jump three times and uh, operate to the Mac so uh, and conversely uh, the, the uh, uh, the situation by which you are not complying with the conditions then you don't receive this is not the only consequence of not complying you don't receive a, a grant you don't receive a license meaning that if you do something which in, uh, touches upon the, the rights of others you are infringing because you're not respecting the, the price the, the condition that uh, the software is distributed for, uh, with so people say, okay, but is this condition what you call copyleft? Well, not, not necessarily. Copyleft is a subset of, con of these conditions. Copyleft are those conditions, are conditions, are a set of conditions, but they touch upon the outbound. They, uh, they uh, constrain you in the outbound license. So uh, the Sometimes is uh, some, something that you must do with the software, i.e. you must distribute a complete um, uh, uh, set of source code of the modified source code corresponding to your modification. But the most uh, uh, straightforward uh, condition is that you are allowed to reuse my software, but you, uh, your outbound uh, license must be consistent or equal to my to the inbound software so the inbound license sometimes there are conditions by which you say or a compatible license but if you take the GPL the GPL P2 V3 it, it, it forces you to use for the outbound software the same license as the inbound GPL in GPL out of course other licenses are not that restrictive other licenses say uh, BSD in, GPL out. But you cannot do GPL in and BSD out. This is, what, this is what I want to convey with inbound versus outbound. So uh, th this, is, this is actually copyleft. Uh, copyleft, uh, uh, depending on the outreach of these conditions, whether it's constrained to the library itself or the file, we have weak copyleft. So you are allowed to embed this in something which is considered a derivative, but it's the outbound license can be uh, wider or different from the inbound. So this is the, 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 what we call weak copyleft. In order to have uh, some other license uh, touch on the entire derivative, so we have strong, uh, strong copyleft when you are uh, constraining the outbound license to the inbound license for the entire set of, of code which is considered derivative, which contains the software. So what you can have, the more restrictive the license in the inbound license is, the more likely you have clashes, con uh, conflicts. And you can have states whereby you are simply, it's simply impossible to mix and match the condition. This is why it's important to have only one or very few strong copyleft condition, whereas it's tolerable to have many uh, non-copyleft or at least weak copyleft licenses because it's less easy to have a clash, to have an impossible situation, to have a segmentation, fragmentation of the commons. So uh, I'm already late, so I have to, to run a little bit. Uh, when we, call, when we uh, speak about compliance, we mean exactly this. Comply, respect the licensing condition of the inbound for our outbound. And I use respect 
not comply because this is just uh, uh, the rules, the law uh, uh, for being a good citizen. So these are the rules, are legal instruments, but are also social instruments. You don't, you don't uh, uh, avoid fist fighting in the, in the road because you are uh, comply with the law, but because you are a good citizen. At the same time, you comply, you respect the license because you are a, a digital good citizen. You are a developer that respects the work of others and want to be uh, in compliance and want to be in respect. So, this was the why, and this is the how. I, I, I have only three minutes, so I had to rush very, very, very fast. So, um, of course, uh, in order to comply, you have to find out what license uh, you have the, in the inbound, and the most uh, straightforward is to go and seek in the source code. But it's not always easy. It's a difficult task only to find out. So you have different strategies. Uh, besides have being a human being going and reading, you have uh, at least this uh, thing. Something has already been mentioned this morning. As, uh, uh, reuse is, a, a, is a, an SPDX or a tool for uh, making machine readable uh, strategies uh, and software so that a machine does the work instead of you. Uh, then you have procedural steps. Uh, you organize yourself in a way to be always ready to comply from the inception to the, uh, to the distribution. Um, open chain is just an example. You have scanning strategies. You have tools that go and seek for you with uh, heuristics, with uh, some, 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 some clever things. Um, and, and, and this is, is a... Is a uh, is a way to comply. So XPDX is, uh, is already being uh, touched upon this morning, is a standard for making, uh, co communicating data. It's a machine readable way to say, this software is GPL, this software is MPL, this software is under this and that. So a machine can have an inventory of your software and the corresponding licenses you have. Um, this is uh, uh, something that can be heavily automated. And all the standards, all the, uh, everything builds upon this kind of uh, standard way of communicating soft, uh, the software condition. Reuse, also we have mentioned it this morning, uh, it's a set of tools and processes to, uh, that, that uses SPDX, uh, of course, for uh, making clear statements about the software. So you have a, a, an, or, uh, an ordered way to present your software and make sure that you are presenting good quality information as to licensing. So it's very important. It's a Free Software Foundation Europe uh, initiative as well. Then you have standards. Uh, like ISO 9000, uh, you have uh, 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 the Linux Foundation as organized, and my good friend Shane Coglan is at the helm of that. The Open Chain, which is a standard for making sure that your organization complies as information, culture, instrument, tools, processes, and artifacts that enable you to be, to show to yourself and to your clients, if you are in a in a chain of uh, of provision of software, that you are making good efforts and you can demonstrate your results in making sure that you comply. So that, with the, the all, all the other tools, is very important. And finally, scanning. Scanning is a the less so, so to speak the less resource because it's a bulk it's a it's a brute force way to uh, to ensure compliance if everything else is failed so it's a, like a safety net i advise it to have scanning especially in in the most complex uh, project where you have thousands of packages and making it uh, in a, a, a man-made way doesn't work uh, you uh, you can have scanning for finding uh, cheaters, people who have copied or altered the licensing. So uh, uh, I've made a mess out of, of the license, I've destroyed information or uh, forged information which you receive are false. So this, there are there are databases to do that, and uh, the other is to find by some heuristic the uh, license information in the text. Go and seek in the source code which are and present you with uh, likely results. Phasology is an open source project which is very, 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 very effective. It's complicated. So, uh, but, and, and doesn't need, and doesn't, 
cannot be uh, used alone, it must be included in a continuous uh, uh, development stage. So you always uh, uh, make sure that your licensing information are accurate and in, uh, in any time you build some, 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 piece, some new pieces. So I I'd advise to, 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 to have a further step in CDCI, continuous development, continuous integration, continuous compliance. And over the gentleman over there, we have developed a, uh, something which is still uh, rough uh, at the edges, which is called Deep3, Deep3 which is a, a wrapper to Phosology to facilitate the use of Phosology to, to lower the, 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 learning co uh, the learning curve of Phosology and being able to reuse the results and possibly to share the results of your uh, uh, decisions that you have made in applying Phosology to other projects. Uh, I'm very, very late. Uh, if you need to find more information, of course, the website of the Software Foundation Europe has a lot of very uh, instructive information. This is uh, the, the, legal, the legal stuff uh, that you can find, and there's a lot of host of uh, information. Of course, you are free to uh, make a question. There are uh, uh, helping lists, and of course, also the OSI and the Software Foundation in Boston has a lot of uh, information for you. And of course, uh, uh, just a little bit of advertisement. I have published this. Uh, uh, in, unfortunately, it is in Italian, but this covers the basics and it's a, it's a layman way to understand free and open source software and digital liberties at large. It's, uh, it's not just published in, 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 in print, it, it's uh, CC BY 4 and it's available online so you can get it for free and you're invited to have a read and, uh, and, and if you want to buy, the, the editor will be... The, the, the publisher will be just happy. Thank you. This presentation comes with free software, which is Review.js and Markdown, and it's under Creative Commons 4.0. I think share a lot. Yes, uh, attribution share. Thank you very much. <laughs>